Hip-hop in the late 90s and early 2000s was dominated by a handful of record labels, with Rockefeller Records being one of the most influential. It was the brainchild of Jay-Z, Damon Dash, and Kareem Biggs Burke. The label was formed because Jay struggled to secure a record deal. As he explained to MTV News, I had to put reasonable doubt out by myself because nobody would sign me. The label gained traction in 1996 following the success of Jay-Z's debut album, Reasonable Doubt paving the way for future Rockefeller artists such as Beanie Siegel, Cameron, The Diplomats, State Property, Freeway, and Kanye West. Between 2000 and 2004, Rockefeller enjoyed its most successful years, signing numerous artists and achieving multiple gold and platinum albums. However, in 2003, after Jay-Z released the Black Album, which he claimed would be his final album, tensions within the label's leadership became public. At a public event, Dame initiated a restructuring by appointing Cameron and Beanie Siegel as new vice presidents in Jay-Z's absence. Jay, who was on vacation in the Mediterranean at the time, refuted the move and called it premature as the change was not officially in effect. This led to animosity from Cameron who felt Jay was blocking his opportunity to become a label executive. This incident added to the brewing tension between Jay-Z and Damon Dash. In 2004, amid rumors of a potential breakup or sale of the record label, Dame assured to MTV News that, we'll never break up, it's Rockefeller for life. I would never pass the torch or leave any of my artists. I look at them like my family, almost like my children. I would never leave them with anybody else. Who else could run Rockefeller but me? In that same year, Rockefeller's ownership was fully transferred to Island Def Jam Music Group after a deal was struck. Simultaneously, Jay-Z was appointed president and CEO of Def Jam Recordings, giving him control of both Def Jam and Rockefeller Records. According to Dame, while on the Diary of a CEO podcast, he heard from the record executive L.A. Reid that Jay had said, I'll take the job of president, but Damon and Biggs can't be down with Rockefeller. When Dame confronted Jay about the situation, Jay allegedly stated, I want to be looked at as a businessman, and as long as you're around, I can't be looked at as a businessman. In the same meeting, Jay supposedly offered to return control of Rockefeller to Dame and Biggs in exchange for the full ownership of the masters to Reasonable Doubt, a highly significant album for Jay-Z and the rap genre. Ultimately, no agreement was reached, leaving Dame and Biggs without control of the label they co-founded. When Rockefeller split, some artists like Cameron, Beanie Siegel, and M.O.P. joined Dame and Biggs' new label, Dame and Dash Music Group. Others, such as Kanye West and Memphis Bleak, remained with Jay-Z under Rockefeller. This was particularly hurtful for Dame as he had championed Kanye from the beginning, unlike Jay. In the 2005 song Diamonds from Sierra Leone remix, Jay-Z rapped, the chain remains, the gang is intact, the name is mine, I'll take blame for that, referencing his ownership of the Rockefeller name. He also rapped, I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman, aligning with Dame's claim that Jay wanted to be seen as a businessman. The song ends with the lines, people lined up to see the Titanic sinking, instead we rose from the ash like a phoenix. If you're waiting for the end of the dynasty sign, it will seem like forever is a mighty long time. This was a bold declaration that the Rockefeller split would not end the dynasty and seemed to be a dig at Dame for losing control. Adding to the sting was that these lines were delivered in a Kanye song, Rockefeller's most successful artist, whom Dame had believed in when Jay had not. Amidst all his turmoil, Damon Dash focused more on the Rockaware clothing brand, which he had co-founded with Jay-Z in 1999. The clothing brand was highly profitable, generating millions of dollars, and served as a cross-marketing tool for Rockefeller when its apparel frequently featured in music videos, shows, and public appearances. Jay eventually bought out Rockaware, gaining full control and leaving Dame without any stake in the brand. This move hurt Dame, as well as Rockefeller artists who sided with him, most notably Cameron. In his song, You Gotta Love It, aimed at Jay, Cameron rapped, first you stole Rockefeller from Dame, second you stole Kanye from Dame, Third, you stole Rockaware from Dame. The public nature of the conflict between Jay-Z and Dame Dash likely exasperated Dame's feeling of humiliation as their disagreements and the dismantling of what he helped build was being stripped away from him and became widely broadcasted through songs, interviews, and other media outlets. Over the years, both have shared their perspectives in various interviews, with Dame being particularly vocal. While on the Diary of a CEO podcast, Dame remarked, Jay is about the money, a sentiment he has echoed in multiple media appearances. He also mentioned in the same interview that, in hindsight, he wouldn't have been so generous with Jay. 
He further explained, it was more friendship for me and money for him, and I always felt that, but I ignored it. Dame implied that he was blindsided by Jay's actions, which he felt were unexpected given their personal relationship. This made the betrayal even more painful, as Dame had higher expectations of Jay, viewing him as a friend while feeling that Jay prioritized money and business success over their friendship. On the flip side, Jay-Z explained in an interview with Sway that he and Dame were fully committed to Rockefeller during its early years, spending a lot of time together to grow the label. However, as the business expanded and new opportunities like Armadale Vodka, Rockaware, and the addition of groups like State Property emerged, their interests began to divert. Addressing the riff, Jay-Z stated, It's not a beef, it's just that it's just growing. And it's sometimes growing means growing apart, not in a bad way. Like I like getting into like a LA, you know, like I said, baby face situation. You mm -hmm. know, we all got things that we want to do. We want to do separately, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Which is cool, like I'm happy for him. You know what I mean? As well as, you know, he's happy for me. It's just that it's part of life. It's part of growing up. There was a noticeable contrast in how Jay and Dame publicly handled their fallout. Jay remained cool, calm, and collected, often speaking positively about Dame and their shared accomplishments. In contrast, Dame was more outspoken and uninhibited, feeling deeply betrayed and expressing his frustration openly. The situation was exasperated by Jay's continued success and immense wealth which grew to hundreds of millions, while Damon Dash Music Group struggled and eventually folded due to lack of commercial success. Adding to the wound, in 2007, Jay-Z sold the rights to Rockaware to Iconic's brand group for $204 million, retaining a stake and continuing to grow the business while Dame could only watch from the sidelines. Beanie Siegel, who was a crucial part of Rockefeller, shared his perspective on the situation in an interview with Global Grind TV. He explained that Jay felt it was time to pursue his own path, stating, It's time for me to go and do my own thing. We've made enough money together. Dame was spending a lot of company money, going on a lot of trips, going into a lot of other business ventures, and robbing Peter to pay Paul, and taking money from out of here, and trying to build brands and stuff without consulting his partners. This viewpoint, along with Jay's subsequent success and the empire he built, likely contributed to his decision to take over Rockefeller and its associated brands. In an interview on The Art of Dialogue, Joel Santana, a member of The Diplomats, a prominent group under Rockefeller Records, highlighted that tension between The Diplomats and Jay-Z began when Dame signed Cameron without Jay's full approval. Santana mentioned, From the start, from Dame signing Cam, I guess without Jay's permission, it wasn't an authorized decision. This statement underscored the discord between Jay-Z and Dame in their approach to business, contributed to the escalating tensions that eventually led to their split. Various people have also spoken out about Dame being difficult to work with due to his outspoken nature and flamboyant personality. Perhaps over time, Jay-Z found it increasingly difficult to navigate these dynamics and opted to proceed quietly, catching Dame off guard to avoid any contentious separation. Dame has publicly described Jay-Z as cold in several media appearances, contrasting his expectation that Jay-Z would maintain warmth and openness given their collective achievements and impact. This perceived betrayal left Dame feeling blindsided despite indications that he may have overlooked. However, in his diary of a CEO interview, Dame expressed a lack of regret regarding how things turned out. Interestingly, Biggs, the third owner of Rockefeller Records, remained relatively quiet about the situation. While he participated in a few interviews sporadically, his low public profile from the label's inception meant he didn't garner as much attention as Jay and Dame, who were often mistaken by unknowing fans for being the only owners of the label. Another factor that likely contributed to the deterioration of the relationship between Jay and Dame is their shared romantic interest in Aaliyah, which Dame discussed in the TFU podcast revealing. I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well, and I didn't know. And then, I was, and then she, like, it got brought up, and I was like, both of y'all. But it never worked out for them, and we were both like trying to get at her. Ultimately, Dame succeeded and dated Aaliyah for a little over a year until her tragic death on August 25th, 2001. Dame had strong feelings for Aaliyah, and her passing profoundly affected him. Jay later released a remix to Aaliyah's song, I Miss You, where he included the line, Dame is missing you. Jay emerged financially stronger after the split. His ownership and control of the Rockefeller brand provided him with opportunities to pursue larger financial ventures, culminating in the establishment of Rock Nation, a highly successful entity in music, artist management, and sports management. In contrast, 
Dame ventured into various projects post Rockefeller, including Damon Dash Music Group and a music distribution service, among others. However, he has not achieved the same level of success he enjoyed during his partnership with Jay-Z and Biggs at Rockefeller. Considering the Rockefeller split from Jay-Z's perspective, he likely believed he was making decisions that were in the best interest for himself and the business. From Dame's viewpoint, he likely felt blindsided and deeply betrayed by someone with whom he had experienced significant success and considered a friend. 